let it save and begin the work on materials. We're gonna build a shader first and then worry about the lighting later. So I will use the shading tab here to begin to build up our shader. I will plug in the texture first, the base color here, I'll duplicate that, and link in the ambient occlusion here. It is just a backup for your for the render EV occlusion, in case it's not strong enough to emphasize the crevices here. So we turn it to multiply. Turn the occlusion to non-color. Maybe hit clamp. And this will increase the intensity of the normal Adobe ambient occlusion map. I'll leave it at 0.25 for now. now. Let's link in other maps. Let's continue with roughness maybe. Roughness. Plug it into the roughness. Turn the color space into non-color. This color space to non-color here where is the basic for even something like Marmoset set toolback or sketchfab. We will be looking to that later. That's because the metallic and the roughness is only the raw data input here, not the color. So it's non color should be non-color. Usually only the base color here should be SRBG. And the rest should be non-color. Finally, I will load in the normal maps here. Now, Blender also use OpenGL, so we should need the normal maps to be good. You can do that by checking the edges here. If they layer looks way too sharp, that means you have read the wrong uh, normal maps. The direct X. But since we do have the right normals, we can see our edges nice and smooth like this. And the seams should be lining up perfectly. So that's finished with the first texture group. Let me double check that. That's good. Let's move on to the second group. We'll do the same for this one. I'll load in the occlusion in the base color first. And as in a mix RBG to mix them. At 0.25 strength. Now link in the metallic. Put it in the metallic input. Color space to non-color. And the roughness. Into the roughness. With S with with non-color rather. Finally, the normal maps. That should be the basic shader done. This is the 4K uh, texture export from Softan Painter. You can see our detail very nice in uh, crypt here. Now let's set up the lightings and the setting for the render. Let's go back to layout. I will hit save. Maybe I'll add in the HDRI first. Let's turn uh, this into world so that we can add in our HDRI and check the um, scene world here, which is gray at the moment. I'll add in a environment texture. For the HDRI test step, I would recommend you take something from HDRI Haven here. 
it's a free source of HDRI for all users. Thanks, thanks to this guy. I believe it takes to the whole of the um, admin of this page. I believe his name is Greg So, so thank you for that. Download a few of the HDRI here and experiment on your reflection and your lighting. For me, I have uh, the first perfect one. My HDRI of choice would be this one. The church from Southern Painter. So I took it from Southern Painter and put it in Blender for this. And to control the rotation of the SDRI, I will add in a texture coordinate node. And a band mapping node. I connect the vector to here. And the normals to the vector. That's incorrect. Let's try generate it. That work. And for uh, the ease of editing, I will add in a simple empty sphere here. And I will use that sphere to control the rotation of the HDRI. I will check this uh, box here. That's strange. So we're gonna use the object output here. And use that, we can rotate the HDRI. that we can control the rotation of our, of our HDRI here. Now as for the glasses here, EV is actually pretty suck in case of rendering glass. So this is the best result you can get from EVs for glass. We can split them up into some other material. Let's duplicate the uh, the, the load two here and call it load two glass. We're gonna need that for the later step as well. So let's assign, assign that and get the glass here. and assign it to class as well. So the class material will allow us to turn this into transparent. Like that. Let's try out a couple of options. But I do believe that is the best we can get out of our EV class. This. If you want to get any higher, you may want to turn in the, turn into cycles and use the principal shader node. But if you want to render it in real time, in EVs, this is the best you can get. With that, with the HDRI in place, let's return to layout. Save, activate scene world and scene light. If the background become too distracting, you can use this little technique here. I will add in a mix shader, duplicate the background node, and add in a light path node. I will use the camera ray. 
this camera array here will return the value of 1 or 0. If it is camera array, it will view the shader here. If it's not, it will view the shader here. Which means to the camera, the, the world background would be gray. And to the, the mesh, the background would be this HDRI here. And with that, we can control the background. Or we can simply add in a mixed RGB node here and control the likeness of the background. Like that. We can control the likeness of the background only to the camera. The object would always be lit up the same. So let's have the likeness. Save and let's play with some uh, EV uh, render setting. Let's use the yeah the medium contrast look good. Most of these setting here doesn't affect our mesh much. Only the screen space reflection here, which we add in a lot. Let's check that. You can immediately see the different. Turn on the refraction as well. We don't need such scattering, just a bit of AO. And we need occlusion. It will make our mesh look a little bit more deep. Maybe increase the viewport sample a little bit. And let's save. That is basically the setting done. Now we're gonna add in a couple of black source and our render will be done. Let's rotate the background a little, a little bit. I will use a shade editor world and rotate this to get some nice reflection. Let's use this. Maybe make it a little bit darker. Like that. And manually add in some light source. I will add in a spotlight. Our scene here looks way too dark. Let's add in maybe a top light here. Say it's a spotlight that's shining down on this gun. So add in a yellowish orangey color for the steampunk feel and increase the power something like this would be good Let's position our light source something like that would work definitely feel antique to me so this would be our main light That's look good. Let's add in a fill light. Since our gun here it look way too orangey and yellow, let's add in a blue light source to balance it out. I will position it like this. Just like that. Make it a bluish color. Let's say it's the color from the dark night sky. This light here is 5000 uh, in power. This one should be less. As long as it's less, it's okay. We only need a subtle light source here. Just a little bit of blue should help your mesh out. Like that. Let's position it like this. That is good. The only thing left to do is we're gonna try to separate it from the background. So we're gonna add in one rim light. Like that, I will increase the radius a bit. 
Maybe make it slightly yellow and increase the power. So that's it's a rim light. Let's check the effect. I will turn it off and on, so you can see the effect of the rim light here. And with that, our sliding setup is done. Now, if you wanna take photo XS screenshot from other angles, you may wanna parent your light source to an empty. I will, pair, uh, I will parent them into this empty here by hitting Ctrl P and choose Keep Transform. Now you, all you gotta do is to change your lighting is rotate this light sort here, which will come in handy if you wanna take uh, the render from other angles. Now we do have a camera. Let's position it, lock camera to view, and hit the dot uh, number pad to focus our camera in. Our camera should be in the collection here. Now let's choose the depth of field. I would focus it on the empty here. We can use it for the depth of field as well. And now, you can change the focal length. Our default eyes, human eyes, is has 30 meter, 35 meter for in focal length. So if you want a, a human eye view, choose 35. And maybe tweak the aperture haze a bit. To make everything more blurry. Maybe 2 is enough. You can play around with the, with the lighting setting to create more shadow if you want. This step would be really experimental, so put your time into it, play with it, and have some fun. Say if I would want to create more shadow, I would rotate this a little bit more. Make it a bit more mysterious. But if you like your render already, you can hit F12 and save out your image. Now this, our all of our layers have shown, shown up in our renders. That's why it looks like this. So let's go back. The render wire button is this camera here. Let's click that. It will show up the render setting for all of our objects here. I will disable the render for all other layers beside the low poly layers here. And let's hit F12 again. And that is good. And now we call the, uh, this render done. Before we close out this video, Let's export our gun for Marmoset Toolback and for Sketchfab. I will select all of our mesh, select of type mesh, and I will join them together and apply all the modifier. So let's select Shift L and select the object with same materials. Hit apply all modifier and join them as one. Well. Same for this. Join them together. That. Now we can export them. I will select all of them. Hit export OBJ. I call it Steampunk Gun. Steampunk 
I will check the selection only and write material material group and that should be fine for mobile set tool back in sketchfab and we're done for this video see you in the, in the next two